Okay, so this video is aimed at people who missed the lesson when we were doing it earlier in the year. So assessment criteria 1.3 of unit one, which is all about risk assessment. Um, first questions are, what is a risk and what is a hazard? Pause the video, write the answers down. Okay, so the risk is the likelihood that something could happen, whereas the hazard is something which can cause illness or injury. So the thing that can go wrong. Um, what is a risk assessment and why are they important? Pause the video and write your answers down. Well, health and safety is really important because um, of the, it's the law in the UK. A risk assessment is the process where we identify the hazards and evaluate the level of risk associated with that hazard. Um, we then determine appropriate ways to eliminate or control the hazard. And this is as a result of the 1974 Health and Safety at Work Act, which is a UK law which states that employers are responsible for the safety of their employees whilst at work. Okay, so this is the common sort of framework or grid system that's used to give a risk rating to a hazard. So we look at how severe something is, fatal being the worst, minor injury being the least, and a likelihood of harm. Five, top being almost certain, whereas at the bottom, rare. And we multiply them together to get a reading. So cutting a finger on a paring knife, uh, we might be at here, number two, minor injury with first aid required. Um, again, but the likelihood rating may be is possible under unfortunate circumstances if the person is not using the tool correctly. So this would be two times two, four severity in the amber range. Now, today's learning outcomes by watching this video, I want you to know what hazards are present in the kitchen to be able to understand and explain why they're a problem and to be able to explain how the risks of these uh, hazards can be minimised or prevented by putting controls in place. Um, main hazards in the kitchen environment, we've got cuts, allergic reactions, physical contamination, chemical, slips, trips and falls, burns and scalds and electrical shock. Entanglement as, as well. Uh, cuts, obviously we've got here a range of equipment that could cause it, food processor blades, chef's knives, paring knives, peelers, graters, food processors and skewers. Um, any sharp object, so it might be other attachments for different pieces of machinery, but if they're sharp they can cause us to get cut. Um, preventing cuts is really important, so training staff effectively to do the certain techniques, so carrying knives by pointing them down at your side, um, using bridge and claw when you're cutting to keep your fingers safe, never putting a knife into a washing up bowl to make sure a colleague or yourself doesn't forget that it's there and put the hand in and cut themselves, um, cleaning knives down the back of blades, um, never catching a knife if it does get knocked off the side, um, storing knives in wrap rolls um, or on magnetic racks, you could also store them in a specific locked box, a separate storage box. Um, you've got to ensure that your knives are sharp and well maintained to reduce the risk of slipping when you're cutting and ensure that the processor blades and other sharps are cleaned with great care. Um, using a brush, a washing up brush is usually a good shout so that you're not putting your hands too near the blades. Uh, physical contamination, as you can see here, a range of objects can cause it and it's anything, any foreign body or object which um, shouldn't be in the food but ends up there. Um, this object itself may cause an ill injury to the person, so you know they could break their tooth, they could choke on it, or um, it could cause a secondary illness through biological contamination. So common examples, we've got hair, jewellery, insects, bones, glass, plastic or metal from packaging um, or from machinery that's been poorly maintained. Um, preventing physical contamination, we've got to make sure that food handlers do not wear jewellery. Their nails must be short and clean without false nails or nail varnish so that they don't get flaking or chipping nails. Uh, they've got to have hair nets on and tie long hair back. Got to take care when removing packaging from food and make sure that's disposed of properly. Um, debris, anything from the work area stationary wise should be gotten rid of and moved out of the way before any food prep takes place. And food should be kept covered where possible to prevent anything falling in it. 
Um, business owners have got to make sure that machinery and facilities within their premises are serviced and maintained regularly to ensure that there's no foreign bodies from those that can fall into the food. Um, they've also got to make sure that adequate pest control is in place and so that uh, it's controlled within the building and that staff are correctly trained in their procedures. Uh, this thing here that you can see is called an insect acuter. It's like a, um, a thing that draws insects in with the blue light and then zaps them so that they're not able to fly around, land on food or contaminate it in any way. Uh, allergic reactions. So these are where somebody's body has an overreaction to something uh, that would not be considered um, an allergen in someone else's body. So it's fine for most people to eat or consume. Uh, but not for the people who've got the allergies. Um, the immune system identifies these allergens as a threat and produces an inappropriate sort of overreaction to it because uh, it anticipates that it's a danger. Now, the response that people can get can include rash, itching, swelling of the face, neck, lips, sickness and vomiting, coughing. They might start to struggle to breathe if their airways are swelling and they can end up with anaphylaxis if they have a severe reaction, in which case they need to have a shot of adrenaline through an auto injector to stop them reaching a point where um, they could have fatality or they could die. The 14 commonest allergens that food handlers and food business owners need to be aware of are uh, these. So we've got celery, cereals containing gluten, so that's rice, barley, wheat and oats. Uh, crustaceans, eggs, mustard, mollusks, milk, lupin, fish, nuts, peanuts, sesame, soya and sulfites. Now these are used in beer and wine making but they're also used to preserve meat so put in things like um, dry cured sausages to make them last longer so things like chorizo or processed ham and meat products. Um, allergic reactions need to be uh, prevented and the way that we do it is storing food. We keep allergen ingredients separately in sealed and labelled containers. Uh, when we're preparing food, we make sure that all equipment, hands, um, work surfaces are cleaned down after a task that handles allergens, making sure that we've cleaned down effectively in hot and soapy water. Um, serving, we will need to make sure that Utensils are cleaned in hot and soapy water after handling allergen ingredients. We need to make sure that on menus uh, and labels that allergens are clearly listed so that customers who bought them can see. Now chemical contamination uh, can occur from a number of things. So it's any chemical that's in food, but this could be personal chemicals uh, such as perfume, deodorants, or any other sort of cosmetics. Um, cleaning chemicals could cause contamination, so these could be washing up liquid, sanitizer spray, hand wash, oven cleaner, anything that you normally have around. Or they could be sort of industrial food production chemicals such as fertilizer, insecticides or herbicides. Obviously if you don't buy organic there is a risk of these uh, being on your food. Now, ways to prevent chemical contamination, we would need to make sure that food handlers are uh, storing chemicals away from food areas, uh, making sure that they don't wear any strong perfumes or scents to work and make sure that they don't spray any deodorant or any other sprays in a food prep area. So this could include things like air freshener. Um, we need to make sure that all of the chemicals that they use are used according to the manufacturer's instructions for the jobs they are meant to do. Um, we need to make sure that we're washing all of the fruit and vegetables that we use before use to ensure that we've got rid of any pesticide residues on the outside. Um, you can also peel fruits and vegetables so that you're not using the skins, um, but they do contain a lot of fibre so it's probably better just to wash them. Uh, food business owners must make sure that they train their staff on safe handling of chemicals and make sure that chemicals are stored safely away from food in clear label containers, not mixed up like these ones here. Um, moving on uh, from that, we've got slips, trips and falls. So these are the injuries themselves. So if you slip, you might do that on a wet floor or food or liquid which has been spilled. 
um, trips, it's like mean tripping over an object such as a box, an electrical cable or faulty floor tile. Um, you could fall if you were standing on a step stool or the high A to lift or carry something. Um, obviously when you've got hot equipment such as fryers, griddles, pans, um, slipping is a very dangerous occurrence and must be prevented at all costs. Um, if this were to actually happen, a very severe injury would result. Um, slips, trips and falls prevention. Food handlers must make sure that they've got adequate shoes on, so flat, closed toe, non-slip shoes. Um, they need to make sure that spillages are cleaned up immediately, wet floor signs used so that people are aware that something's just been cleaned up. Um, the clean floors themselves need to be cleaned regularly, so not just at the end of a shift, but any time there is a build-up of debris on the floor would need to be brushed down. Um, you need to make sure that they're not trailing wires that people could trip over and that deliveries are put away immediately so that there's no boxes in uh, the walkways within the kitchen. Food business owners should make sure that their floor is well maintained and that if there's any loose tiles or floor edging is repaired. Um, wet floor signs and adequate cleaning materials should be provided for workers as well to enable them to do their jobs properly. And they should make sure that they train staff in how to deal with spillages. Um, you can see here some of these non-slip mats, so employers might provide these in areas which inevitably get wet if there's no way to prevent the floors um, becoming a little bit wet. Uh, burns and scalds are a very common injury in a kitchen, so a burn is dry heat, so a hot pan, a hot oven door, uh, whereas scalds are something to do with water or liquid, so it would be uh, boiling water, so like a sauce or a soup perhaps, or steam. Um, burns and scalds can be very painful. You can get peeling skin, blisters, swelling, white or charred skin if it's, it's severe. Um, current advice from the NHS is that to follow this first aid advice. So we make sure that the person is not near the heat source. Cool the burn with cool running water for 20 minutes. Um, we need to make sure that any jewellery or clothing near the area is removed and make sure they keep warm. Um, if you can cover the burn with cling fill and then use painkillers such as paracetamol or ibuprofen. Um, medical attention will need to be sought, so this will mean going to accident and emergency for chemical and electrical burns, um, large or deep burns, any burn that's bigger than the size of your hand or approaching the size of your hand like this. Um, any burns that cause white or charred skin of any size, and burns on the face, hands, arm, feet, legs, or genitals that cause blisters. So this commonly occurs if, for example, a pan of hot liquid is spilt, and um, obviously the hobs are slightly above waist tight, and so spilling it, it can cause um, the legs, the feet, the genitals to be affected quite badly by that. Um, preventing, we need to make sure pan handles are turned to the side, that will prevent pans from getting knocked off. Um, oven gloves are a must when we're handling hot things, you know, putting things in and out of the oven. Um, lids of pans should be sort of brought towards you to let steam escape out of the back. And then you need to be careful when you're pouring hot liquids or draining pasta carefully, as the splashes can obviously uh, scald you. Um, cooling liquids to a reasonable temperature before blending them as this can cause pressure build up if you blend a really hot liquid and it can cause the lid of the blender to blow. Um, you need to make sure that you're stirring things with wooden or heat proof plastic utensils to stir hot liquids because they're um, an insulator and so they won't conduct the heat to your hand. Electrical shocks where we get a transfer of heat energy to the human body, sorry electrical energy to the human body. Um, faulty electrical items can cause it or incorrectly used electrical items in the kitchen. Um, food handlers have got to follow these basic rules. So it's don't use electrical equipment with wet hands, don't use it near to water and don't submerge the item in the water. Make sure that the flexes and trails, oh, sorry, the flexes and wires are not trailing near to sinks, cookers and floors. Don't use any items that you're not fully trained to do so. Um, 
check the plugs and flexes before use to make sure they're not damaged and always use the equipment according to the manufacturer's instructions. Um, food business owners must make sure that they are providing effective training for their staff and that their electrical equipment is pat tested annually for safety to make sure it's okay for people to use in their business. Um, entanglement is an injury which can happen when hair, loose clothing, fingers, hands uh, is caught in moving machinery. So this video was a bit of a YouTube sensation uh, last year, um, but it's an example of how dangerous it can be. So things in the kitchen which could cause electrical entanglement would be things like the electric stand mixer, the electric whisk, we've got a potato rumbler that's got moving parts, pulling the potatoes through and removing the skins. And we've also got a, um, a mincer. In order to prevent entanglement, food handlers must make sure that they've got not got any loose clothing and that their clothing is sort of tightly contained under an apron that's tied tightly at the back of their body. Um, their long hair must be tied up or you know under a hat. They've got to make sure that there's no jewellery and then they must make sure that the man of uh, machinery is used according to the manufacturer's instructions. And again, it's the food business owner's responsibility to make sure that their staff are trained to use the things uh, in the kitchen. So hazards in the kitchen. What I would like you to do is to pause the video and make a list of all the hazards that you can see. Okay, so physical contamination hazards. You can probably see that we've got a person with long hair and hair here that's not tied back, which can cause a problem. We've got a pet creating hair, which can also cause a physical contamination problem. Um, chemical contamination. Hopefully you picked up on the fact that there's some chemicals here next to food products not stored where they should be, which is out of the way. Um, at least they are clearly labelled though. Um, bacterial or biological contamination. We have got dirty dishes in a food prep area, which is a big no-no. Uh, we've got pets in the area, which can cause um, bacterial contamination. We've got overflowing rubbish in an open bin that um, could attract pests such as flies. Um, and obviously they can cause bacterial contamination by landing on the food. Um, slips, trips and falls, several hazards here. We've got trailing wire, although it's not trailing on the floor, that can be a problem. These spillages of food and also this spillage of liquid, which would need to be cleaned up. We've also got a girl here working on a box, so unless she's been trained to do that, that could be a problem. She's reaching very high to get some things that are stored at a height that's too high for her. Birds and skulls, we've got loads of problems here. We've got a pan handle over another hob ring, we've got a pan handle sticking out, we've got a pan that's furiously boiling and is unattended. Uh, these would all cause these uh, hazards. We've also got a kettle producing a lot of steam. Electrical shock, obviously, we've got electrical wires dangling here, though, and everywhere we've got one producing steam next to a dry heat one, which is never good. You shouldn't have that water, the item next to this. Allergic reaction, we can't tell whether there's any allergens in this picture, actually, um, as nothing's labelled. We can't see anything obvious like eggs or celery and mustard or anything like that. Entanglement, we've got somebody with long hair here, this person is, I think, using an electrical mixer, um, which has got long sleeves on, so she should have those rolled up. Cuts, we've got a chef cutting here with a chef's knife, and then he's got another knife, incorrectly stored, hanging right off the edge of the desk or the work surface. This should either be placed right in the centre, so it doesn't get knocked off, or should be stored properly in a rack or a roll. We've got a little video for you to watch here, it is in the comments, so if you have time, click on that, go to it and watch the video through. Make a note of all of the different categories and make a note of all the different hazards that you can see within that video. 
And now it's your task. What you need to be doing is um, assessing potential risks and hazards in the cooking environment and completing the risk assessment. So to achieve a pass, a basic risk assessment needs to be carried out. We need to be looking at how to prevent uh, bacterial contamination of food, how to prevent cross-contamination, how to prevent physical contamination, how to prevent hazards such as slips, trips and falls, cuts, scalds and burns. We need to also explain um, how to prevent cross-contamination when handling raw meat, poultry and vegetables, making specific reference to specific bacteria. Um, to get a distinction, we will be looking at things like slip trips and falls, safe storage of cleaning and liquids, and COSH. If you want to know more about preventing cross-contamination when handling raw meat and COSH, there are further videos in the Unit 1 playlist uh, to help you learn about those things. Uh, this is an example of distinction level piece of work. So here we've got risk and we've got a hazard. Uh, just down we've got a risk level rating. We've got reasons why these things are a hazard. Um, and then we've got control measures that we will put into place. So how to prevent that from happening. And as you can see, it's quite detailed. Here's a list of further reading that might help you in the different categories. This is also listed in the comments of the video.